little stress as possible is what we're going for. sucks when we need to go buy stuff or when we need to sh ship animals things like that but uh we still our stores are still well stocked and, and uh, i'm a homebody anyway so it really hadn't affected us too much at all so obviously we're not at home at the moment though we're actually going to help some friends of ours move a collection down at Slow Country Falls in South Carolina. Needed some help uh, moving, and he has a, a small, smaller collection, but still, you know, a, a good number of animals. And he's asked us to help. And of course, you know, no matter what conditions, when friends need help, we go help. So we're on the way now uh, to their place. So you'll see them in just a second. I don't think I've seen Chris's collection in a very long time. And I know over the past year or two, he's picked up a lot of cool stuff. Some for me, some not for me. But I'm really excited about seeing all of it. And this is going to give everybody the opportunity to see how you would move a collection if you ever had to move it. Uh, I've never had to move our collection off of our property. We've never moved since we started doing this. Don't plan on moving anytime soon. But I do know that there are people that have to move. A collection his size is what most people have. So this is actually what we're going to do. And hopefully it helps some people. Not sure, not really sure what I'm getting into. Like I said, first time I've ever done this. We're gonna make a pit stop on the way there. Uh, I'm gonna last all down, go into a business, wash my hands when I get back in the car. But everybody always asks about our uh, stickers, where we get them from, and we're going to stop here and pick some up because we ordered some a couple weeks ago, and we'll show uh, show off their, their logo, their business for a second, and if you ever need anything, by all means, hit them up. We've had 100% satisfaction uh, of, of what they've done. They're very, very, very polite. They're very good about making sure that they get exactly what you want done. However, if you're scared to spend money, if you don't, you know, if you like cheap stuff, then this ain't the place for you because their quality is exceptional and they're not super cheap. But I like having good quality stuff and I don't mind paying for it. So, you know, so we'll, you'll see that in just a second. Anyway, it's going to be a long journey. I'm sure this is going to be a one, two, maybe even three part. YouTube safety so stay tuned to all of them and see how it goes if you ever have to come here this has got to be one of the worst things to navigate through <laughs> so it is not in a uh, very easy place to get to but like I said before quality so here we go KPC signs right here Grab these things real quick. Their number is nine one two slash 
963-2495. So here's some of them we just grabbed. Um, these cost about a dollar a piece, four inch circles. And I don't really know if you can catch this on camera or not, but these things are super thick. So this is actually more of a uh, military and aircraft grade vinyl than your cheap uh, cheap ones that you buy. So anyway, got these. So let's continue with our trip. Chris Gay with uh, Slow Country Balls. Yeah. Houston, I'm Chris Gay from Slow Country Balls. I've uh, been breeding ball pythons now since 2012. And um, my wife joined me in 2013 and she's been supporting me through the breeding. And she comes to occasional shows and helps. She really takes care of a lot of the administrative stuff. If you guys have seen us on Facebook, or Instagram and Facebook, it's probably my wife to take care of that. Um, but yeah, we moved to a bigger house so we can need some help. And, Grace and our youngest Hannah is here. The two other girls, hey, you, that you guys might have seen at some shows when down here in Savannah or Columbia, are with their grandmothers to make it a little bit easier to move. But uh, they currently live on this property, and they're moving. How, how far are we moving? It's about eight miles, I think. And we're going from a 0.15 acre lot to a half acre lot. No, it's not very big, but at least we'll be able to have a rat shed finally. And <laughs> no more smelly garage. I'm so excited. <laughs> And uh, we actually got a few more bedrooms so that the girls can have a little more space too and a playroom. So that's the advantage of moving and we're having a big, just an interesting time with the coronavirus to move, yeah. but we're lucky and we have friends to come help us out. Yeah. So they have all those, all their animals, which I told, uh, told everybody on the way down here um, that your collection is more reasonable as to what most people would have. Yeah. So how many animals do you have? If you were talking about like my collection, I would say that I've got probably about 45 to 55 animals at any given time that I consider my animals. Then I've got what I'm selling or transitioning from. So right now in the house, I've got 85 animals. And that's after the season. I haven't had any eggs laid yet this year. So that's last year's season. I think I probably have about 16 up for sale. And then some holdbacks that you, know, you and I are going to talk about where I might want to take the collection. But I'm trying to focus on quality. In specific projects and um, the thing that I've really learned is to tighten up the collection when you're doing it like I am because I'm just it's a hobby for me I'm an engineer and I've been raising three girls with my wife's help and then I'm also doing master's degree online so I've got to balance things and I love the snakes I want to treat them right and I want to make sure I do it with excellence so I'm focusing on a smaller collection just so people know out there uh, like Chris just said he's got around 85 ish snakes and that's, you know, somebody like myself, that's uh, probably only about a third of what I have. But that's more normal-ish <laughs> yeah. for the general normal world. might be a stretch. So, Maybe a stretch. Yeah. For, for okay. our hobby. It's a, it's for, for our hobby, hobby breeder, that's about right. Uh, we're fixing to get started. Explain what we're fixing to do here because Cassie's not always going to have the camera yeah. while we're doing some of this. So, basically, since it's only about eight miles, we think that the best option is to take the water bowls out and actually put the racks, because they're all sea serpents, uh, P expanded PVC racks, put those in the minivan that we took the seats out of, and the Honda Pilot that's got the seats floated down. We should be able to move, I think, in one strip over with them like that. Well, really, you're trying to disturb them as least as possible, right? Yeah. Because we are, we have been breeding since, what, November? Yep. So we do have females who are hopefully gravid and, and growing eggs. So that's part of the, the thought process too, is that we don't want to stress them out and yep. we don't want anyone to, you know, just slug out or, you know, have any issues like that. So unfortunately the timing's not the best, right? You want to theoretically move probably in the fall after babies are laid. Um, but it is what it is, right? Sometimes um, you can't be avoided. <laughs> sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Yep. So um, yep. that's the other factor too, is we're trying to figure out how to do it so that it's the least stressful possible for, for these girls who are yeah. really going to so give us a lot of So just to re-illustrate on that, uh, it's breeding season and we don't want to stress the females out mm -hmm. because they need the eggs to be laid to hatch sure. and you know, sell. So yeah. uh, as little stress as possible is what we're going for. Just, yeah. just human stress, no straight snake stress. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got plenty of that. Human stress. <laughs> Ooh, that's all whatever ball yeah, game when it comes to yeah, moving. Yeah, don't go there. Yeah. So, all right. Let's get let's started. Let's do it. Come on, Reigns. Let's go. Black 
All right, so you can see the collection here. Um, got spots for 26 breeding females eventually. I don't have full 26 yet. And then I like to see some racks like this because it's so flexible for me as a small time breeder. I can use a V35 short tub, or I can go to two V18s or three V15s. So I can be real flexible and move around what I need when I need it. Yeah, I absolutely love this system. So you're actually, everybody's gonna see something similar to this from us pretty soon, so stay tuned. I mean, because it's a little bit tight sometimes, but I mean, even like a very large male can be in one of these yep. without being an issue. You can get women as male, I mean, he's comfortable, he eats well in this, yep. you know. And you know what, let's, uh, let's bring up something about these. Because I love this system, I love these tubs too, and it's great for smaller mm -hmm. hobbyists or just normal keepers. Uh, the only thing we need to really be concerned about about this particular tub is the height on it. So if you have a female or a big male, yep. this is not a good tub for it because once the animal hits the rodent and tries to wrap on it, they can't do that. So really, really pay attention to the size when you're using these short tubs because don't forget that the snake has to double its yep. plus has the wrap between them. When I get away with so. kid though, he's a frozen thought eater. Yeah. So he, it, I get away with that with being he's a frozen thought eater and half the time he actually won't even strike at it for me. I just put it in there and he eats it overnight. <laughs> so that's a great point and I actually had a couple of the larger males. I'll have to wait for them once they strike and coil up. Yep. I'll have to wait for them to start to uncoil, then I can shut the shot. Yeah. So uh, you just got to play like with. A, I don't do live feeders in, these in this. That wing yeah. is tight that size. Yeah. You know, I mean, like the biggest live uh, feeders I do will probably be something about this size. You know, that's about as big as I'm going to go for a live feeding yeah. animal in one of these tubs. Yeah. If it's a frozen thought, I can get away with it though. Right. So great system. Just wanted to point that yeah. out when I seen that. So. That's definitely. Um, if you plan on using this system, keep that in mind. But we have to move all of this and uh, and get it to the, the new house. house. So as you can see, it breaks down here and there. So that's where it separates and on the breeder size. Yep. It's here, here, and we even got at least they were locked up a few minutes ago. And they still have a lock to show you guys. No, they just unlocked, but got the. Uh, Female fire clown from Justin Kabolkia and the male bla uh, inchy blade clown came from uh, Reptile Founders, I think, out in California. So, nice. And you notice that I do have paper towels. Uh, I've had bad luck breeding on reptile ship or coconut in that I actually had a male get the fiber in when his hemi penis came back in. He got infected, had to send him off for surgery. And so, just to play it safe. I always put paper towels down into a tub when I'm breeding, so then the male will go back to his tub. So this is the tub that she's normally in, and I'll just move the coconut out, put it back in, and I'll put her in. She goes back into her slot, and then I'll let this dry out and clean this out, and then next week you'll be ready for breeding again. You'll notice uh, he uses cards, or you know yep. he has his own system. So if you're used to watching us or any of the rest of the breeders, Everybody has their own system that yeah. they use. So it's just best to figure out different things, watch different things, find a system that works for you the best. So here, when I put a rat in, if it's a frozen rat, the writing goes up, so I know it's frozen thawed. If it's alive, it'll go down, face down. That way when I track what they ate, I can tell if it's frozen thawed that week. And then if they're breeding, I'll take the male's card and the female's card and I'll put them together in the center so I know that that's the, one of the tubs that I need to check to see if I have locks or not. Okay. But that's kind of the simple, uh, simple one. Um, and then if I feed on a different day, then if feed again, I'll also use these colored cards here just to tell, remind me, okay, who I've already checked on, who I haven't checked on. So, you know, if I feed someone, if I fed someone, so let's say this one was fed yesterday and I just fed this one today, I'll throw the pink card like that so I know I don't need to check on him, but I need to check on her. Gotcha. So just everybody uses their own system. You just yep. have to find what works best for you. So and like Chris was saying too about the, you know, breeding on reptile chip. I mean, we know hundreds of breeders yeah. that do this. He just happened to have some bad luck that one time. Bad luck. It may not even been from that. Yeah. But that's just kind of it's his personal thing. So 
that's what he does from now on and, and if and you think that's a good idea then with a collection of this size the cost of doing that is very, doing, is very little it's much less than the surgery was yeah. to fix it so you know for me it may be an ounce of prevention versus a pound of cure yeah. and I don't know I've talked to other people no one else has really had that same experience but when the vet looked at it he thought it was the bedding had gotten in there when he did the surgery to remove it so I was like I'm just not gonna take that risk it's yeah. something I, my business model doesn't afford. There you go. So you just have to you do what's best yeah. for you. So anyway, uh, guess we're fixing to start tearing some racks down. So, yep. Uh, Y'all are going to be able to watch some of this process. We're going to try to film as much of it as possible. Obviously, it's going to take several hours to do this, and you're not going to want to watch several hours of this. We're fixing to get started. Stay tuned. Look at this sweat. Hold on, let's get a picture of his face right here. <laughs> uh, so, this is only uh, one, of the adult racks. one of the adult racks. So, anyway, let's get it loaded up. Thanks for watching our daddy's channel. Make sure you subscribe.